Matthew! Go on, Matthew! Come on, come on! Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Is that in a bit? It's a breeze, I can feel a stiff breeze. <laughs> Nice, perfect running conditions at the moment. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to getting started. I just hate just waiting around the last few bits. It's just horrible, isn't it? Yeah. But just got to tick the final few boxes, get on the train, get to Blackie, do a little warm up, have a gel, and then go. Next time I cross this bridge, um, yeah, hopefully I'll be feeling pretty decent. The crowds will be amazing, and. At that stage, I'll have some idea of whether it's going well or not. Uh, but it's still be too early to know how the full marathon will go. But yeah, just can't wait to get back to this bridge now. Last time crossing it before I run across it in the Harrier's vest. I guess this is as good a time as any to go through the race plan. It's the same as Valencia. I've got to stick those three rules back in my head. It worked then. So number one is be patient. Number two is don't be greedy. And number three, stay positive. In a marathon, you will have moments of doubt, but if you can just override that with positivity and uh, not go out too hard and not get greedy at the beginning, then hopefully I'll have a good day. I do love race day. I love this feeling of feeling nervous. Um, speaking to other runners on the train and walking over here and there's just nerves are building and everyone you can tell is like, trying to be all cheerful and positive, but deep down they just want to get started. We're all the same. Uh, and yeah, I think one of the big differences between training and race day is that, that you can use those nerves and adrenaline to make some of the early part of the race feel, feel good, feel comfortable, feel easier than hitting that sort of pace in, than in training. And I rely on that. I need that first, well, I need as much of it to feel good as possible, but I need definitely that first five miles to feel really nice and relaxed. And uh, hopefully I'll get to utilize these nerves in that way. Waffle, waffle, waffle. Time to find the championship pen. I think it's just over here. Right, we're half an hour away from the start. I've done some drills, pretty ready. Just gonna do a little bit of a jog before we get going. I've got a throwaway layer on. And yeah, let's go race London, see what I can do. Right, 15 minutes. It started raining, but that's okay. As long as it's not too windy. I'd rather this than the heat anyway, so yeah. Early in the race, I wasn't focused on pace and I wanted to find a good rhythm. I found myself behind Russell Bentley. I knew I was in safe hands. So Matt has gone through 5K and he's gone through in 16.44, which is ahead of the pace that he wanted to do. He said he was gonna keep it really controlled and calm at the beginning, so hopefully it's a good sign that he's feeling good. Um, yeah, and hopefully it doesn't slip now. Uh, as he comes up to 10k, we'll see, we'll see, but hopefully that is a very good sign for him to start. Don't be confused, this, this weather is absolutely dire. I feel bad for the guys running this. Let's go, Matt! Let's go, Matt! After about four miles, I found the perfect pack. They were moving at a pace that was slightly faster than my PB, and I sat at the back of the pack and tried to stay relaxed. Well done, Matt. Great running, Matt. Go, on, Matt! Well done, Matt. Go, on, Matt. Go, on, Matt. Go, on, Matt. Let's do it. So Kirsty and I are just running <laughs> to mile 11, wondering how on earth we have done marathons in the past week. Oh. <laughs> to be fair, Kirsty did Boston. But yeah, we're trying to get to mile 11. Matt's looking good. I think hand signals went down the drain, but we're all right. Bye, Matt!
Okay, so that's mile nine and 11 ticked off. I don't think he saw me at either of those, but he's looking good. <sighs> Let's just hope he can hang on to it now. He's executing exactly as he planned. Um, and yeah, he's holding a good pace. So hopefully this will continue now. And yeah, fingers crossed. Come on, Mark. Come on, Mark. Come on, Mark. My aim was to stay calm and relaxed, run smooth at the back of the pack and try and do as little work as possible. I had a bit of a stitch early on and I felt like my fuel wasn't sitting well. This was frustrating as fueling is one of the things I had practiced the most in training. I just told myself, run relaxed, let the heart rate drop and the fuel will digest. You'll get through this, it'll be okay. I just wanted to get to halfway feeling strong. Go on, Matt. The support out on the course was absolutely incredible. The best I've ever experienced at the London Marathon. I was trying to feed off the energy, but trying to stay calm and focused at the same time. Take the energy in from the crowd, but without going from the game plan. Calm, relaxed, smooth running. It was really difficult at some points because it was so loud and intense and it made you want to surge or run faster. But I was trying to keep the bunny in the box and just stay at the back of the pack, nice and smooth. Approaching 20k, I knew I was nearly at the Tower Bridge. The Tower Bridge is the most iconic part of the London Marathon course. It's loud, the crowds are amazing, and it's a special moment going over the bridge. You're nearly at halfway, and you should be feeling good, but I wasn't. I still had a stitch, and I felt like I was hanging on to the group a little bit too much rather than cruising. past the 18 mile mark and in that time Matt has crossed halfway in 1.11.40 something so he's on for a stormer still executing still doing what he said he was going to do so at the moment he is on for sub 2.24 um, but if he's feeling good I don't know because I'm missing the hand signals he's missing me so I don't really know but yeah if he's feeling good then he's going to be able to kick it on in the second half and that would be the dream um, I really hope he's feeling good um, yeah From 20 to 25k I was really struggling. I told myself it was a bad patch, I was going to come through it. I said if this is your worst 5k that's okay, just keep on plugging away, don't lose the group, stick with the group. I was struggling and the pace was feeling fast. I had told myself that I was going to get through the rough patch, but between 25 and 30k things weren't any better. My quads were really sore now and I could feel myself slipping off the pace. I told myself, stay strong in this 5k. This could just be a bad patch. It could be a bad patch. Make it to 30k, you'll see Kelly, you'll get a lift and you can finish strong. I was trying to be positive, but my body was shutting down and the pace was slipping. He's doing good. 
That's a great sign at this stage. And I tried to get to mile 20 to see him. Going past Kelly at nearly 30k made me feel emotional. It did give me a lift and it was great to see her, but I felt some guilt. I felt like I was letting her down and that the race was slipping away from me and I wasn't putting in the performance that I'd promised. It was hard because my legs were so sore and I was pushing, but the pace was still slipping. I could feel the race slipping away and I knew the last 12k were going to be an absolute grind, huge struggle, but I was going to give it everything to get to the finish. Get in there! Get in there! Come on, mate! Come on! Looking really strong, Matt Reese. Keep it going. Brilliant! Matt! Come back! Come back! Come back! Matt! Strong running, Matt! Come on, Matthew! The world's legend! Come on! I was trying to scramble my way to the later miles. Um, that has gone through 22 miles. Mm, pace has slipped. So, I'm not sure if he's just having a rough patch or what the issue is at the moment, obviously. But hopefully, he's okay. Just as long as he's okay, that's all good. But yeah, now to the next point about mile 25. The miles were taken by so slowly. My quads were in agony. I felt like I had no energy. I forced down a gel and took some caffeine and hoped to respond, but nothing. I was really struggling, but I just had to find a way to the finish. I was going backwards and constantly being passed by other runners. It was demoralizing. They gave me support, they encouraged me. There was no way I could respond. I just had to grind it out to the finish. Another runner from the original group I was running with was also having a tough day. Marcin, who I recognised from social media, is a Polish runner. He was just up ahead and every time I caught him he'd pull away again. He was keeping me honest. I thought we were in it together, we are both having a tough day but we'll grind it out to the finish. With about 600 meters left, I realized I could still break 230. It wasn't the time I'd come to run, but if I could run a low 229, then it would be my second fastest marathon and my fastest ever at London. It was worth fighting for. So I am just making my way uh, to our meeting point. He's due over the line any minute. Um, not gonna be what he expected or what he wanted from today. Um, but I'm sure that he has put in every ounce of effort to just finish up as strong as he can. And I just want to give him a big coach, put a little bit emotional. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give him a big coach now. Come on,
gave it a really, really good guess. I just didn't train hard enough. I wasn't in the right shape. But I gave it everything. The last 15k was a different ball game. How'd you go, mate? PB! Get in. Well done, mate. Brilliant. Ah, oh, that was so, so, so much of a slog. For so long of that. And the crowds are incredible. I just wish I'd been in better shape, but 229 again. Oh, I'll take it. I, at some, so many points, I wanted to stop and just get F, but I didn't come here not to get a medal. <laughs> Harry. Finish 229.11. Um, I'm just glad he's finished. He's obviously, you know, not felt great for the end of that. I don't know what's happened, but just want to give him the biggest, biggest coach. Oh god, emotional, emotional. Um, yeah, hopefully he'll be through soon. Get his medal now and his bag and uh, waiting for him when he comes through. Kept me honest, like, he was just ahead of me, dragging me around as we both struggled in the last 10 miles. Great for him. The last 10 k. You are psychic. It was me and him and everyone was just coming past us, so we were just looking at each other like, we've got to get to the finish. But I can't believe you know, just, I know you. I recognize you yeah. long, long time ago when you when you crossed the finish line yeah. with guy who dropped on Charles from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I can imagine we are on the same level. And for me it's like, yes we are like a little... This guy's amazing, he's had so many marathons and he's got amazing times and he's only gonna get quicker as well. Well done. Medal, beer, pizza, what more could you ask for? Oh, marathons are so hard. Just so hard. Um, I loved it, but I really struggled from about 25k really. Uh, gave it everything. Uh, went backwards in the second half, but I made it to the end. Ran 229, fastest I've ever run London. So yeah, a good day all round.